Hi, this is John Krasinski, Pittsburgh Soccer Now uh, on Pittsburgh Sports Live here um, with University of Pittsburgh men's head coach Jay Vitovich. Jay, um, thank you for joining me. I know it's uh, it's not obviously mid-season, but it's a busy time for you, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. You're trying to put all the pieces together from the end of the, se of the spring season and get ready for the summer and fall and uh, recruiting, etc. So yeah, it's a it's a busy time. So what I really wanted to talk to you about today um, was the 21st century model. Um, but actually, on that note, a year ago, a year ago at this time, it was a very different uh, situation. You, we actually got a chance to kind of test drive that 21st century model. Um, it got a chance to play a full season where you played in the fall and played in the spring and then obviously made it to the final four a year ago around this time. Um, it, interesting how that what, what was your assessment from that year uh, as a coach and how that went I know COVID was obviously a factor but still from managing a college soccer program going through the course of a year um, where you were able to play both in the fall and the spring wow John you got a lot of questions there but uh, I think first off let's just let's define you know like when you bring up the 21st century for the people uh, you know model that that uh, they don't know what that is. That's uh, what it is. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a uh, proposal uh, by the Division One uh, men's soccer coaches uh, to to increase the season the, the the time of the season to balance it out. Really, is that right now we're playing all twenty three games in in like eight weeks during the fall, and then in the spring you get another five, but. Uh, they're not countable games. They're just, uh, you're just playing. So uh, we're just trying to balance out the schedule where we're, we're, we're playing a game a week rather than, you know, take out the congestion of the schedule of playing two, three games a week. They're now just playing one game a week. Um, and you spread that out through the year and we move the championship to the, uh, like you just said, brought up here in, into uh, the end of May. So it's really just uh, balancing out the, the schedule. It's not adding more games. In fact, is I think that it's eliminating a game or two, but it's decompressing it, allowing the players to, um, you know, do a healthier action to be more of a student athlete, to, you know, not missing as many classes, to stay healthier so they're able to recover from games and prepare for games. So that's the, the general gist of the 21st century model. And as you said, uh, you know, last year, you know, at this time we, we had the, uh, the championship uh, at the end of May, and when it was uh, it was played, it was like one of the best TV attendances and full you know full crowd for the final four as well. So one of the best attendances. So just the ability to to play at that time of year for well, heck, when you started the COVID season, it, it was just tremendous to be able to play. You know, we we're like the only conference that supported wholeheartedly of of playing all year. And it was just a tremendous, you know, opportunity to play, train, and uh, and compete that uh, other, you know, uh, other institutions didn't have. The ability to compare it then to the uh, 21st century, it, it was just fantastic. Once again, not missing classes, uh, having a full week of preparation. The development of the team, you know, was was major. It was also allowed a lot of the uh, the players who weren't starting to get a lot of experience because they were able to train with the first team rather than just by themselves. So just the whole development process was fantastic to, to go and play where during the springtime, every game, it got nicer and nicer, you know, to the championship where it was, uh, you know, you're in shirt sleeves rather than uh, wearing your, your down jacket with uh, and protected from uh, the snowstorms that we've had in the tournaments in the past. And, yeah, so just a, it was a fantastic experience for us. What are what are some of the biggest challenges for for this proposal? What what are you up against right now, or what are you and a lot of the coaches that are really want to see this happen? What, what are some of the biggest challenges? Well, I think one of the things that, to note is uh, I think it's um, there's a an eighty five percent. They did a survey for the student athletes, and there's like an eighty five percent approval rate you know or you know desire to see it happen so across the board uh, just the you know the, the desire by the players to to spread it out to to be able to you know balance out their academics with the athletics it, it's a key one um i i believe the biggest challenges are really just uh, the mindset of you know doing something different 
you know, that for, for everybody to say like, oh, well, now we're, we're, we're adding more, we're doing this, we're not adding any more, we're not doing any more. In fact, as I said, we've actually dropped, we've conceded, you know, like two games out of uh, the competition schedule. We're, we're really limiting the time, like instead of, you know, playing the, the biggest part of the season, you know, during the, you know, from Thanksgiving on when everybody's it's going to final exams, bad weather, and uh, you know family holidays. It's not playing at the end of the year, and you're you know you're actually done with you. Know, you quit your fall part of the season just before Thanksgiving, and then you start it up in uh, in March. So the big thing is just for people to see that it's you know that it's something different. That we're not asking for more. We're just looking to redistribute. I think that's a big part of it. People will bring up facilities, but you know, as we saw last spring, everybody was able to do that. Um, and it's not, and what everybody has to remember is that we still play and train all spring anyway. So it's not like there's much changing that way. There's a bit of concern for you know certain programs that maybe uh, personnel, uh, you know, staffing is an issue in terms of. Uh, you know, like your sports information director, you know, like say ours here is, you know, works with us full time, but is primarily with us in the fall. And then the spring is in the fall is also working with softball and then works with softball, you know, primarily in the, in the spring. So, you know, there's going to maybe need to be redistribution there, but everybody's still, it, it's actually from what I've been told is that it is all year, but it's not as congested where you're not doing, you know, you're not thrown into everything all at one time. So it's just spread out a little bit more. So those are the main concerns, I would say, is, uh, you know, fear of change and uh, uh, facilities and, and uh, staffing. And to have the, the postseason be mostly after finals seems like a good solution but then again not every school's equal I and mean, some schools would go into may with their finals but but still the weather i think does does really that does really add to the is a factor because the field conditions as well i mean obviously ambrose urbanic field could withstand the november december but it was still the fact that it was it was literally snowing when you guys walked off the field after beating hofstra Yes, and 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 I think a big part of it is that you know being able to grow the pro, the uh, the sport, you know the you know college soccer is ability to make our championship bigger, and and it's just been impossible. The venues that we've used in the time of the year to to be playing in December, you know fourteenth, fifteenth time period when all as you said all exams all, all the students have you know left the campuses they've all gone. Uh, the weather's uh, diabolical at, at that time, or at best sketchy. Um, it's it's really pr uh, prohibitive. So the ability to now to come at this time of year when it's all nice, when people, you know, the student athletes have finished up, uh, most of them have finished up exams, just makes makes a, a much better opportunity to, to grow the game. In terms of college soccer as a whole when we talk about division one you talk about men's and women's soccer you talk about all the other uh, lower divisions um i know this is a proposal that's being put forth to the division one uh committee but i know there's other coaches that would like to see this as well it is it's there been a, some momentum to really create this or across the board uh not yet not yet, but I think, but there is one thing um, that uh, that I think can benefit Division Three as well as they they're having a, a big issue is that their championship, their their NCAs, once they get in, they're playing like Friday Saturdays. They're putting these student athletes through you know really risky time where you know so once again it's the ultimate part of your season. And now they're playing, you know, two two days in a row. It's just it's it's physically impossible. So you're you're, you're really uh, welfare and safety of the of the student athlete is a big factor. So I'm just, I I would hope, and and I know the Division Three has tried to push this and made it make a change. I would hope that if we did something like this in Division One, that it was something that could trickle down for them. That even if even if the, they stay with the traditional sense of you know Division Three plays in the fall 
that at least they would think about the the welfare of the student athlete and, and give more time you know for them to recover from match to match so maybe set us up timetable wise obviously the proposal was um tabled if you will uh in april by the committee what's going on now uh i'm, I'm having a brain fart here john but uh because i'm missing the name of the, the uh the committee but what what happened was during the uh the uh, april meet the um may meetings i believe or april meetings of the ncaa division one council they made a decision to hold off on make uh, to making a decision on any proposal that wasn't emergency based right so uh, everything was tabled until later time because there's also a move of like what is the restructuring of is there going to be a restructuring of college division one athletics so right. um and, and there's a committee that will be meeting you know here I think it's in June and then also going into the fall, it's going to be determining a lot of uh, factors. And they know that they just didn't want to make decisions on things uh, at that time until they could look further into, you know, the ramifications of everything. So it has been moved. It will be voted on in this June. So, All right, so we'll look forward to that. Um, so we'll, we'll vote on. Yeah, in terms of you know, you, you and your program, um, maybe a, a, if you want to give any updates, I know you're still kind of finalizing class of 2022, um, but just how are things going right now? We, we feel really, feel really positive about it. Um, we lost a tremendous amount of talent, you know, whether it was uh, through graduation or early departure to the professional ranks, or unfortunately, some people joined the, the portal as well. So we've lost, uh, you know, I think it's like 15, 16 players. But I think what bared out was that uh, this spring was um, the progress that the team made, uh, their the individual development. We had a, a very small roster, I think 12 field players and, and two goalkeepers. But we ended up having some, you know, playing some really good uh, soccer, uh, winning, winning games against, you know, storied programs and um, just, really our game was was fantastic so i felt really good about everybody who was who's remaining with the program that they know their jobs they know what you know pit soccer is all about that, that there's a really great uh mentality of collectiveness on the group and just um, a work rate that was really you know really elevated itself so I'm, i feel really positive about that and we believe that you know right now we have about eight nine maybe maybe it's ten players who are coming in and i gotta say that um seven of them potentially can be starters so uh, you know or they're brought in to start so it's it's going to be the the progress on the uh, training field with uh, you know the, the the competition there the competition to to, to win games um is and for for roster spots and for starting positions and minutes is going to be tremendous and if everybody can just understand they're going to put a you know you know a um they're going to get their minutes and they're going to you know have important matches because it's a it's a tremendous schedule as well a very competitive schedule that uh i'm, I'm really excited for the the season i did want to ask you about the transfer portal and what it has you know what that's been like over the past few years um you've you've had a knack for being able to rebuild programs quickly but what is the difference now as opposed to before with the way the transfer portal has um, we've seen it affect other sports obviously but um how's it affecting soccer well a lot of it's it's like the wild wild west right now and it's um i i think that there's um that it's very easy for a young man to um, decide to go elsewhere, you know, and and to not stick with the process or or not to buy in and, and commit. So I think it, that makes it very easy for for people to leave. And uh, you know, I I'm not sure what it does for for the young men. You know, how much it, it it's helping them with getting better scholarships or better playing time. It's uh, but it's it's um 
it's a trend that you have to deal with. It, it's happening. Um, you know, we, before the portal really started up, we had profited by it was several transfers, and now it's more. Maybe it's going the other way, where more people are leaving than uh, than staying. But part of that is just so they can find a better opportunity. So I, I don't. I don't know what to say about it. I, I would. I, I don't bring a person in here not to make it and have success while he's here. So it's. Um, you know, I just I think that a lot of kids have to decide when they're when they're going into a, a competitive program that they're going to have to deal with the process and it's going to be very competitive and uh, uh, and that's a big change for the kids. So uh, yeah, not a tremendous fan of of the way the way it works right now. Yeah, and you're not alone. That's for sure. Um, just wanted to get your comments before we wrap this up in terms of. The progress of some of your recent players in the professional ranks. I know Jasper and um, Arturo specifically st uh, stood out uh, recently, uh, you know, coming out of the program. But um, just your thoughts on them, and and maybe some, maybe some other players we may not even be aware of. Um, but obviously, we've watched Arturo Ordonez up close here uh, in Pittsburgh, and he's really progressed well in Bob Lilly's system, and has become a mainstay. Um, in the middle of that back line. Yeah, so Arturo, you know, fortunately his talents gave him an opportunity with the, with the MLS and, uh, you know, he made the decision that uh, for his growth as a, as a player to get as quick as possible into adult football and try and performance football was to, to go directly with the Riverhounds. And uh, he's very excited there and uh, we're excited to have him around. Um, I, I think it's a it's it's a great match. He's he's a he's a warrior and uh, and just loves to compete. And I think that fits right in with uh, with 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 Coach Lilly and what what he's doing there and what he's built. Uh, the you can see you know top you know top of the table once again. So I think he's a, a great fit there, and he's uh, he's enjoying the experience. So we're enjoying having him around. As you men mentioned, Jasper was also. Uh, drafted by Real Salt Lake and he's made it with the first team. He's, uh, he's gotten a start. He's played in just about every, uh, every game that he's available has played. And uh, once again, his versatility has been fantastic because he's played everywhere from a, you know, a, a defensive midfielder to a wing back to a winger, to a, to a 10 and he's finished out games. And uh, yeah, so he's enjoying the experience of, uh, of uh, playing in MLS there. And uh yeah, and getting a chance to grow. I know that I, I, it sounds like they're pretty high on him and his future with with the, with the program there. We've got Nico Camposano, who's uh, he's with Cincinnati and he's fighting his way through things with uh, with visa situation. So he's uh, he's a little bit on on the shelf right now, but he's been training with FC Cincinnati and uh, you know he's he's built to be a pro. So he's just waiting for games and being able to be more you know have a better opportunity to play as soon as the, the visa situations are, are you know sorted itself out uh alexander dexter right now is um he's he's had he's made it into a couple of different camps in mls and uh right now he's with loudon united in the in the with uh, dc's uh second team there their usl team and uh he's trying to catch on there so he's uh he's been there for a couple of weeks and is uh uh, the reports are that he's uh, he's he's growing into their system. So hopefully he'll uh, he'll be able to be back here playing against the the Riverhounds in the future. So those that are the guys great. I think from last year. Yeah. yeah. So. Well, we'll definitely be looking forward to that um, and seeing obviously some of those players come back um, when it's uh, if maybe Nico down the road uh, or uh, for sure uh, Alex Alexander. Um, so yeah, I mean I think that. That's definitely something that's uh, a good uh, sign for your program is that it's just you, a lot of players are moving on uh, to that level. So, um, Jay, I wanted to thank you for your time today. And as always, uh, just really appreciate um, your contributions uh, and everything you're doing for Pittsburgh soccer. Great, John. Thank you and appreciate you covering Pittsburgh soccer. All right. Thanks, Jay. Have a good one. All right. All the